and we're back with another tutorial. In this episode, we're going to be making a jetpack in the style of a gadget. So it will function exactly the same as the last few videos that we've done with the flashlight and compass. However, you'll be able to fly, which is really cool. So let's get straight into it. Hop over to settings and project settings because with our jetpack, we are adding movement. So down to input, you can see in our axis mappings, we have a move forward and a move right, which is great for moving forward and moving right. But a jetpack isn't just moving forward or right, it's moving up. So we need an axis mapping for moving up. Hit the plus sign next to axis mappings. And we're going to call this move up. Now for my controls, I'm going to use spacebar for moving up and adding another movement here. I'm going to use left control to move down, hitting minus one on the scale there. For controllers, we will get face button bottom for moving up. So that'll be A on Xbox or X on PlayStation, the same as the jump button. And for moving down, face, button, right, with a minus one, which will be B on Xbox and circle on PlayStation. So that's it for project settings. Next, let's go over to our hero who is in Content Blueprints Core. And over next to our movement, we're going to right click and type in move up. We want the access event move up. Then right click in the event graph and type add movement input. You could have just copied these over, but we'll get a fresh one, no difference. And we'll right click again and get actor up vector. So we'll make some room here because it's getting a bit cramped. I'm sure you'll see me speed up this little section in future and make it all nice and neat. So just like move forward and move right, I want to put world direction for get actor up vector. I want to plug the executable into the executable and the scale value will be the axis value, which means that when our character is inevitably flying, we will have control of that movement. Just keeping all of our movement nice and neatly together there. So compile and save that. Last thing to do here, just like crouching, we actually need to tell the character blueprint that it can fly. So pop over to character movement. And then in the search details here, type in can fly. And tick this box. This doesn't mean that we're flying right now. It just means we have the ability to fly in future. So compile and save that. Back in our test map. Let's go down to gadgets, right click on gadget base and create child blueprint class. And this will be gadget underscore jetpack. Once we're in jetpack, as we've always done, we will go over to the event graph. We don't need tick. We don't need begin overlap. We'll keep begin place so we have a reference to our hero because we're going to need that. Right click and type in activate gadget, get the event and deactivate gadget event. Then we'll get our booleans is gadget active two setters, and when we hit the button, 
we will set it to true. And when we hit the button again, we will set it to false. Next up, speaking of said hero reference, get hero reference or reference hero. From here, we want to get character movement just down here. So this is accessing the movement component of our character. And from here, we want to drag off and set movement mode. So being a character, there is already script running in the background, which sets the character's mode of movement. And if we click this drop down, we can see what's been pre-programmed. We have walking, nav mesh walking, which is another thing entirely, falling, swimming, and flying. So when we jump in the air, we enter the falling mode by default. And if we created a water volume, which we will do in the future, then we would be swimming. So for this, we want flying. Connect that executable. And then grab these three nodes here and copy them over, control and C, and paste them, control and V. Plug the executable in here again, and we're going to set our movement mode to walking. If the movement mode is set to walking and we're in the air, Unreal Engine will know what to do and set us to falling, the same as if we're jumping. So compile and save that. We'll attach the jetpack here and pop back over to our hero. Now that we've created the jetpack, click on gadget slot three, get rid of that search field for Ken Fly, click on gadget base, type in jetpack, compile and save. Now back over to the test map, let's hit play. And now if I hit three and press spacebar, I am flying. And if I press control, I'm going down, space for up, control for down, or whatever movement you set, or that's A and B for up and down if you have an Xbox gamepad, or X and circle if you have a PlayStation gamepad. So I can fly. And now if I hit three again, I've entered walking. Now, another cool thing about all that pre-scripted movement is that we can now make decisions based on whether we're flying, walking, swimming. For example, reloading in water might not be very realistic, so you could go and do that. As an example, let's pop back over to B Hero and over to our jump script and our crashing script. So here are two things that we should be able to do if we're walking but shouldn't be able to do if we're flying. To change this around, all we have to do is right click and go is flying. And you'll see a nav movement here. There's that character movement we discussed earlier. So if I was to get a branch and drag over and dragging off here, get a not Boolean. So if I'm not flying, then I can jump, then that makes a lot more sense as opposed to firing off the script. Although you won't notice the difference if you're actually flying in Unreal and you are jumping as well, it does help to make sure that you're not getting double inputs. The more important one here is crouching though. We wanna get the same script and use that to prevent us from crouching when we are in the air because we can still crouch and enter that crouch phase and being that crouch is also the same button as flying down you're essentially crouching and uncrouching the whole time so we won't put anything here for uncrouch because to uncrouch we need to have been crouching so all we need to do is cover our crouching base we can leave uncrouch the way it is And although that elongates the script quite a lot, it's not actually detrimental in any way, shape or form. In fact, it's just making this entire thing more thorough so that you are preventing potential glitches in the future. And again, this isn't entirely necessary. You could skip this, but 
as an example of a way that you could decide, hey, I don't want my character to be able to do something while he is walking, falling, swimming, whatever it is. So just compile and save. And our extended script is done to make sure that we're not crouching in the air. One other thing we'll do is while we're over here in activate and deactivate gadget, if we are already crouching, then we should uncrouch the moment we enter a flying mode. So because the crouching and uncrouching is essentially a function of sorts, all we need to do is drag off our reference hero and type in uncrouch. So you could default uncrouch every single time, or you could also ask the question from your hero reference is crouching, which also gets character movement and a Boolean. I don't think that's entirely necessary because uncrouching doesn't hurt anyone. Basically, Unreal Engine will not do anything with the uncrouch script if you're not already crouching. So we will uncrouch when we start flying, compile and save. We will hit play. The way I've set this up is that crouching will be held. So this is more for if you had a toggle crouch. But now if I hit three, I will uncrouch. And now I'm flying and I can't crouch. I'm just moving down and up and I'm not getting that jump movement as well, which again, you won't see the difference on the face of it, but it is keeping our script clean behind the scenes. And that'll be it for the jetpack. <laughs>